Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Lord's house, our Heavenly Father's house on this Father's Day. We are here because Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And on this Father's Day, again, we give God thanks for all fathers. And as we look forward to all that he has in store for future fathers as well, we ask God's blessings as we raise children in the faith, as those uh, fathers that God has blessed with, with uh, children, and also spiritual fathers as well, those who take care of others, <coughs> raising them in the to grow in the fear and the wisdom of the Lord. And speaking of the fear and wisdom of the Lord, you're invited to stay for Bible class afterwards, this service downstairs in the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom, as uh, the King Solomon was teaching his son the wisdom, but also for all of us as God's children to grow in wisdom, fear, and knowledge of the Lord. would also encourage you to sign your names in the attendance pads that are in the pews and pass those down onto one another throughout the pew. Looking at the names if you don't know one another already, and then greeting one another by name as, as we go through this service. Also on Thursday evenings, there will be a Bible study led by R Ashley Robinson. Find your people for all women of not just the congregation, but also the community. And this, the study, Find Your People, is about building deep community in a lonely, lonely world. And so spread the word, ladies, and invite uh, those <laughs> friends of yours in the community and someone else that needs to find their people and to find them in the Lord Jesus. Would remind you of the opportunity to uh, log on and register through Right Now Media. The uh, QR code and the text code have been in the announcements. We'll be sending an email out soon as well. As we get the email list cleaned up, we don't want to send to a, an old email address and, and miss you. So if your email address is not current, uh, that you haven't been receiving those, please do note that in the fellowship pad as well, and we can get that logged in. There are some sign-up sheets for the meet and greets uh, with myself and, and Tanya as uh, we go forward and getting to know one another better <laughs> as pastor and people and wife of a guy who's a pastor and the people of the congregation. And uh, there's some yellow sheets on the back and some white sheets on the back with dates. And those you can sign up on to select the date that is uh, going to be workable for your schedule as well. And those aren't the only ones. More will be coming as time rolls along. And so now let us stand and greet one another with the peace of Jesus Christ and let us worship. Dear Heavenly Father, on this Father's Day again, we thank you for being our Father and sending your Son to restore that relationship with you so that we can call you our Father and to call upon you in all confidence as we ask you for your blessings, for strength and faith. And Lord, one of those blessings is your Son's body and blood together with the bread and the wine that you give us from your table. As you strengthen us and forgive us our many sins, as we proclaim your death and your resurrection until you return, Lord Jesus, we ask that you use us to spread the message of our Heavenly Father and our Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit who calls us to faith to all whom we meet. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ, amen. amen. We continue with our opening hymn, Blessed Jesus at Your Word. <coughs> Your word, we are gathered all to. 
begin together now with our Father. As we were baptized, whether we are here or for those who are worshiping online and through the radio as well in our homes, our Father is with us. We are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face. Who exalt in your name all the day, and in your righteousness are exalted. Let us confess our sins to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have not always been the bold witnesses to your love and mercy that we are called to be. We have transgressed your law in thought, word, and deed. We do repent and are truly sorry for our sins. Those known to us, and those unknown. Have mercy on us, gracious God, because of the redemption won for us by Jesus Christ our Lord. Forgive us all that needs the forgiveness found in him alone, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, move us to serve you faithfully as we await his coming in glory. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his boundless mercy, God has promised forgiveness of sins to those who repent and turn to him. As a servant of Christ, I announce to you the grace of God, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your kindness, you caused the light of the gospel to shine among us. By the working of your Holy Spirit, Help us to share the good news of your salvation, that all who hear it may rejoice in the gift of your unending love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We hear the word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 65, verses 1 through 9. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. To a nation that did not call on my name, I said, Here am I, here am I. All day long I have held up my hands to an obstinate people, who walk in ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations, a people who continually provoke me to my very face offering sacrifices in gardens and burning incense on altars of brick, who sit among the graves and spend their nights keeping secret vigil, who eat the flesh of pigs and whose pots hold a broth of unclean meat, who say, keep away, don't come near me, for I am too sacred for you. Such people are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that keeps burning all day. See, it stands written before me, I will not keep silent, but will pay back in full. I will pay it back into their laps, both your sins and the sins of your fathers, says the Lord. Because they burned sacrifices on the mountains and defiled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps the full payment for their former deeds. This is what the Lord says. As when juice is still found in a cluster of grapes and men say, don't destroy it, there is yet some good in it. So will I do in, in behalf of my servants. I will not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob, and from Judah those who will possess my mountains. My chosen people would, will inherit them, and there will my servants live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning, as we focus on the gospel reading of Jesus, where Jesus told the man that he cleansed of the evil spirits to go return home and tell what the wonders of what God has done. We meet a missionary in former years who we'll meet someday in heaven who also returned home 
to Ireland so that he might spread the word of the Lord. So meet Patrick, missionary to Ireland. Usually you hear about him more in March, but today we get St. Patrick's Day in June. Among the best known of Christian missionaries is Patrick, whose missionary effort to bring the gospel to northern and western Ireland to the fifth century is legendary. Born to a Christian family in Britain, he was captured as a teenager by Irish raiders and taken to Ireland, where he was forced to serve as a herdsman. After six years, he escaped. Following a special calling to serve God, he entered a monastery community. Although Patrick served faithfully in his monastic offices, he never lost the desire to return to Ireland to bring the good news of Jesus to the far reaches of the island. Ordained as a bishop in AD 432, he made his way back to Ireland and spent the rest of his life spreading the gospel and organizing Christian congregations. He forged strong bonds between the Irish church and the Christian communi communities located throughout the European continent. He strongly defended the doctrine of the Holy Trinity and found ways to relate the mysteries of God to the people he served throughout his long life. And now we continue to hear the word of the Lord in the epistle lesson. Our epistle reading is from Galatians chapter 3 and 4. Uh, before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up under faith, should, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ, that we might, might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of law. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. What I am saying is that as long as the heir is a child, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. He is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were children, we were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. But when the time has come, fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand in honor of our Lord Jesus as we hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 8th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. They sailed to the region of the Gerizines, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged him repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into them, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerizines asked Jesus to leave them, because they were overcome with fear. 
So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home, and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Together now we confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We join in singing, This is my Father's world. God's mercy, grace, and peace are yours. In Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives, amen. Will you please join me in prayer? 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for being our Father, our Creator, the one who also sent your only begotten Son, so that we might also be reclaimed and redeemed as your children. Thank you for sending your Spirit to call us to faith and to enlighten us with your word and with your gifts in that baptism by which you made us your children and also as you nourish us at your family table. As we gather at this table today, Lord, as we hear again your words of forgiveness through Jesus and your words of strengthening of faith so that we can ward off Satan and all of his evil minions. Lord, we ask that you would not only strengthen us in faith, but also give us the words to speak so that our neighbor hears of your love, of your power, and of your forgiveness, no matter what we've done and no matter what Satan has been doing around us. And so, Lord, I pray that the words that I speak and the thoughts that go on inside all of our hearts and minds may truly be pleasing. May they be perfect and holy in your sight. And as we ponder your word and put it into action, let us stand, Lord, because you stand as our foundational rock and as our Redeemer who's risen. Amen. Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. That was the commissioning Jesus gave this man that he drove the demons out of so that he could go back home. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's dig deeper into Scripture. In this Scripture section, there's a lot of fear going on. Fear of both the known and the unknown. We heard those words of people being afraid of Jesus and of power, being afraid of this man that was filled with demons. And even to today, there's a lot of things that we don't know. We don't know what's going to take place. And Satan would like to fill us with fear. He knows that we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is warding off the demons that would try to get inside of us. But there's also fear of what's going to take place. For some families, it's a fear of will there be food on the table. For others, there's a fear of will this child ever come back home. There's fear of the unknown. But there's also fear of the known. Some things just plain scare us. And when we give in to those fears that are from the outside, we're also forgetting that our fear should be placed in God and God alone. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And as Luther said in the explanation of the first commandment, we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And yes, that's a healthy fear. The fear that comes from knowing God that he's on our side. That he could have taken us out, but he didn't. He took all of our wrongs and put them on Jesus himself, and he cast out our sins away from us. As far as the east is from the west, so far are they gone. But as we look at what Jesus did to deal with the fear of the people in this area, opposite the side of Galilee, Gentile country, people who were raised not knowing the God of Israel. Oh, they maybe had heard about him from some Israelites, but they didn't know him. They knew their gods that they worshipped, things that they thought helped them along in life, things that they thought would help them through their troubles, but they still didn't work. But a lot of fear going on, so let's see what Jesus does when he encounters the fear going on as he got off the boat after the feeding of the 5,000, after the stilling of the sea. He then goes across the lake to the Gentile area around the Gerizines. And when he stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. 
And for a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. In that picture there, you see some open tombs, some open graves in the land of Israel. And that's similar to what this man was living in, in this Gentile country across the Sea of Galilee. Not a pleasant place, an unclean place, not just because it was dusty, but because it had been filled with dead people and still had dead people in it. A place of uncleanness. And why was he there? Because the people in his hometown were afraid of him. Afraid of what he would do because he was filled with all of these demons. Now keep in mind, this man, we don't know how old he was, scripture doesn't say. But he had a father. Just as you and I have fathers. And if this father was still alive, just imagine what he was going through seeing his son filled with demons. Afraid of his own son. Or if his father had passed on, the people of the town still knew the family line. Fear. And fear does things to people. They even had chained up this man, but the strength of the demons broke those chains. And so here he was, living in the caves and the graves with death and demons power. That was his home. That was his surroundings. That was his destiny, or so it would seem. But Jesus stepped off the boat, and as we heard, Jesus told the demons to come out of this man. He was bringing him to be cleansed of not only the evil, unclean spirit, but also the other demons that had since uptaken residence in him. Because Jesus knew he also had a heavenly father. And Jesus wanted to be his brother. When no one else in the town, and here was Jesus of the Jews. And the Jews weren't to be among unclean things. And we see Jesus' mercy and grace for this man, someone's son. And who knows, maybe he was already a father too. We just don't know, scripture doesn't say. But God the Father wanted this boy back. And Jesus wanted him also as his brother. He was held hostage by these demons, but Jesus had come to free him, as he had come to free every single person from bondage to sin, Satan, and eternal death. And as Jesus called out for the demons to come out of this man, when this man saw Jesus, he cried out and he fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. It was the demons speaking through him. They knew who Jesus was. They knew their creator. They knew that they were fallen. They knew what would be their eternal demise. An eternity of suffering in hell. And what do they say? I beg you, Jesus, don't torture me. The man didn't want to be tortured. The demons didn't want to be tortured. But they proclaim who Jesus is. Not just someone from Nazareth, someone from the other side of the lake, but the son of the most High God. And there are others around, the people herding the, the pigs on the hillside. They'll later go to town and tell the people what this Jesus, who the demon said was the son of the most high God. But yet Jesus continues on, working on the fear. Jesus <coughs> asked him, what's your name? Legion, he replied, which I'm sure would have put the fear, more fear, into anybody from the town because they knew what a Roman legion was. 
A centurion was over a unit of a hundred soldiers. A legion was over a thousand soldiers. Over a thousand demons were in this man. Crying out to Jesus, don't torture me. That should tell us about the power of Jesus that they knew. And listen to what else is going on. As they begged, don't torture me, not right here in this man, but also... They begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss, into hell. You see, the day of judgment had not, has not yet come for all of the demons either. That's the last day. They're still running around this earth. Those hordes of hell are still wreaking havoc. But they did not want to go to their eternal demise in hell early. You ever thought about that? Hell's hot. And hell's eternal. And you and I have heard people tell people on this earth, go to hell. They have no clue. Those demons knew. They knew they were fallen. They knew that was going to be their eternal demise. And they did not want to go there any earlier than they had to. All the more reason God calls us as his sent people. Let people know how hot hell is. And Jesus paid for you not to go there. It's not an unpleasant place alone. It's eternal. So whenever you hear someone tell someone else go to hell, say, I pray, God, that they don't. Even Michael the archangel said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And so if any of us have ever said those words, say, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive us. For even the demons did not want to go there early. So let's teach this world. Jesus suffered the eternity of hell for you and for me. And for those demons, their sentence was pronounced. They just didn't want to go there early. And here we also see the Creator's kindness. Jesus shows some temporal timely mercy to these demons. He sent them into the pigs. They begged him to send them into the pigs, and then he did. And then they rushed into the sea and drowned. Still not a pretty picture. But they left the man, went into the unclean animals, and then went into death in the sea. And what happened to the man? He sat at the feet of Jesus. He got cleaned up real good. Inside and out. But what do we see? The people feared the demon-possessed man. And then the demons feared Jesus. And an early eternal sentence to the abyss in hell. And the people were filled with fear of Jesus' power. Because the pig herders ran into town. They lost their crop. They lost their herd. They lost, they thought, their livelihood. And now they're scared of Jesus. And yet they see the man in his right mind. Sitting at Jesus' feet. What power to cast out a legion of demons who were scared of Jesus themselves. Don't torture me. Don't send us to our eternal early demise. And the people were afraid. But Jesus dealt with their fear in another way. They asked Jesus to leave, and so he left. But he left someone behind with them. 
The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. Maybe he was thinking, well, the demons begged Jesus to send them into the pigs. Maybe if I beg him enough, he'll bring me with him on what his journeys. But Jesus said, no. I've got something bigger for you. I want you to go to your town, return home, and declare what God has done for you. Go to the people who are afraid of my power and let them see the change in you. Let them see the love of God in you. A lot of times we think, oh, it would be so nice to just sit at Jesus' feet. It is. But we can't stay there. That's why Jesus ascended to heaven. Because he sent us to let this world know that's filled with fear, both of the known and the unknown. We want you to know the love of Christ in the good, healthy fear of God. And so he also tells us, return home from this place, forgiven and freed once again. Don't let the fears of the known and the unknown drag you down. Don't let them hold you back. But go and tell others in your community and to the ends of the earth even, how much God has done for you. And we, saw, we see from life in the caves and graves with death and demons to life back home to tell how much God has done for him in this man. And we can see it also in our lives. As you and I also have done this already at various times, but we're not done. We're still here. God has more people for us to tell. People who live in the midst of uncleanness in this world. People who feel that there's no hope for their lives. May not be iron chains, but it's chains of fear by which God gives us freedom in Jesus. So return home. Declaring what God has done for you. Perhaps if there are some family rifts that need to be healed, Father's Day is a good time for children to come home and know that their fathers are not perfect, nor are any of us, but we have a perfect Heavenly Father who forgives and still says, I want you to know me as your father and where those relationships have been good and blessed in the home with the love of Christ to enrich it even more and to raise the family in the nurture and the fear and admonition of the Lord to know that God doesn't want us to live with fear and so be it for a reunion of healing or a strengthening of what's already healthy. Be it Father's Day or any other day, it's a good time to return home declaring what God has done for you. Yes, our mission is to go back to those who know us. We're fearful of Jesus' power so that they can see the difference that Jesus makes. The freedom that he gives and that they may embrace Jesus' saving power. So return home. Declaring what God has done for you, go and tell. Let people know that there's eternal home in heaven that is waiting and being prepared by Jesus. And until he calls us home, he has work for us to do, to be his people who help others understand that Jesus casts out fear. And so this prayer might be used by you. It's an example. 
God, this family is yours. You made us, you save us, you heal us. You are the good Father who hears our cries and heals our wounds. Have your way in my family today. In the name of Jesus, return home, declaring what God has done for you. Amen. And the peace of God that goes beyond all human understanding will guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives. Amen. In thankfulness now, we return our tithes and offerings to our Lord. The offering plates will be coming towards the front, and so if you haven't already put your offering in the plate on your way in, you may place it in the plates as they come through the seats. Lord, receive these gifts from our hearts, from your blessings that you gave to us, which we now share, that your gospel, your good news of Jesus casting out fear and restoring relationships with you, Heavenly Father, and with one another, may be spread beginning here in West Point, Cumming County, the state of Nebraska, to the United States, and to the ends of the earth. In your name, Jesus, we pray this. Amen. Will you please stand as we join in the prayer of the church? Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray as your people, gracious Lord, for the whole church, that the name of Jesus be honored throughout the world and the gospel message of salvation joyfully be proclaimed. Bless the missionaries of these days as they labor in your vineyards. In particular, we pray for Jana Engelhart and Josh Lang and family, Ruth Mattia and Jacob and Lauren Freyer and family. Lord, stand with them and spread your word mightily through them and also through us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our we pray for the nations, mighty Lord, that the things that lead to peace be accomplished and that people live without fear in all places around the globe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, loving Lord, and for the neighborhoods in which we live. Grant that there be a sense of mutual trust and care in every place. Grant that the work of elected officials, civil servants, and caregivers be blessed among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the armed forces of our nation, defending Lord, that they carry out their assignments with a sense of support and purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those with special needs this day, caring Lord, as we remember those who are hospitalized, those who are ill. We pray in particular for Kristen, Courtney, Reagan, Elaine Trainer, Bill Berry, Heather Wopel, Sue Robinson, Kenny Krupka, Tammy Kramer, Doreen Meyer, Morgan Jacobson, Margell Sasser, Eva Wickert, Linda Binkley, May Lund, and Kenneth Hazenkamp. We also pray for those who mourn, including the family of Bob and Deb Klitz on the death of Bob's mother, Janine Klitz, on Wednesday, June 15th. <coughs> Lord, remind them that you are with them, and you wipe away the tears of grief as we look forward to the reunion the resurrection. 
We also pray for the unemployed and underemployed, the chronically ill and homebound, and all others whose situations are not known to us at this time. We also remember those who are traveling away from home in this season. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, we also pray for all fathers. We thank you again that you give us the perfect image. And even as we feebly struggle, we ask that you would bless all fathers in this day and age. We thank you for what they have taught us in raising us in the faith, and not only in the faith, but also as examples in society. Lord, we pray that you would also call those who are not yet believers in Jesus to come to know you and see the blessings of having you as their Heavenly Father. We pray this, Lord, in your mercy. Lord of time and eternity, we thank you for the missionaries of centuries past and for the faithful examples of devoted Christians of previous generations whose witness and ministry have blessed us. Guide us that we continue in the ways they have established, that one day we rejoice together eternally at your throne. Lord, in your mercy. We prepare for the sacrament of the altar. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord our God, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son for our salvation. Grant that we receive his truly present body and blood as a guarantee of our salvation and as a foretaste of the feast to come in your eternal kingdom. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and praise together with the Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We join in the closing sentences. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. But your work is shown to your servants, and in your rules of power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We pray, Almighty God, you have called your church to witness that in Christ you have reconciled us to yourself. Grant that by your Holy Spirit we proclaim the good news of your salvation, so that all who hear it receive the gift of salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We join in our closing hymn sent forth by God's blessing. enjoy this Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all fathers. would also ask you to keep our Nebraska District Convention in your prayers this week. Uh, the district will be gathering in convention in Kearney on Friday and Saturday morning. And so do please keep uh, your district in our prayers as we go forward with the Lord's Gospel together as congregations in Nebraska and to the ends of the earth. Justin Miller and I will be your voting delegates and so pray for God's wisdom and guidance for us also as we vote on matters and also on elections. Go in peace and joy, serving our Lord with gladness. <laughs>